I'd like to call this meeting of the Economic Development Committee to order this uh, Tuesday, April 24th, 2012. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Representative Zaire here. Jones. Here. Barry. Here. Brandon. Here. Michael Brown. Wanda Brown. Here. Carter. Here. Kurtman. Here. Breaker. Here. Hafner. Huff. Kratke. Here. Lauer. Here. Lyra. Here. Long. McGagan. Here. McGee. Nasheed. Redman. Here. Rizzo. Sheeper. Schneider, Smith, Swearingen, Torpy, and Wallingford. Here. You're here, aren't you? <laughs> Just say yes. There being a quorum, um, we'll call to order. The first bill that we're going to hear tonight is House Bill 1571, the Good Jobs First Act, sponsored by Representative Mott Oxford. Representative, welcome tonight and proceed when you're ready. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Zare and members of the committee. Thank you very much for hearing uh, House Bill 1571. Uh, I'm Jeanette Mott Oxford from the 59th Missouri House District in St. Louis City. Um, I am uh, presenting this bill because I have concerns similar to yours. Um, I want all of our communities in Missouri to have a vibrant economy. I want uh, our constituents to have jobs that they can uh, support their families with. Uh, and um, I, I want uh, us to practice uh, best practices around our tax credit programs so that the ones that are producing what they promise uh, are supported and that those that um, uh, are not doing so uh, are eliminated uh, because we, we certainly can't afford to keep doing things that, uh, that are not working. Um, so I went looking for models of what are best practices in other states and I found uh, the, uh, the group called Good Jobs First. I have uh, uh, Greg Leroy here from that group that will be my principal wit witness tonight uh, about this bill. And uh, uh, they have done scorecards on the states as to what is, is working well and what is not. I think there have been maybe three uh, scorecards uh, issued uh, recently that uh, you'll be hearing a little bit about. Um, I think that we may agree about the components of the bill that uh, I've asked to have handed out to you that we should have programs that are transparent and accountable, uh, that we should be uh, seeking to provide quality jobs, that is, full-time positions that pay family supporting wages and provide health insurance and other benefits. Um, we would want to protect uh, public education so that school boards are not hurt by the decisions that we make, which then, of course, leads to a local uh, uh, bond issue sometimes. Uh, we would like to prevent backroom deals so that there's public hearings uh, so that there's some shun sunshine on the deals that we have. Uh, it would be disastrous to have a race to the bottom to set our overall tax policy in a way uh, that leads to uh, tax reduction competition and uh, the attendant decline in public services that hurts our state's economic health in the long term. Uh, it's good to listen to local citizens, including uh, having community benefits agreements. Uh, and uh, I think that smart growth is often a better choice than senseless sprawl, uh, that jobs can be created with smart growth as opposed to senseless sprawl, uh, and that the evidence is there about that. And then we're all concerned about these rob your neighbor games. You've already heard some bills that are about uh, the eight states that surround us and the ways that we compete against each other for jobs. Uh, sometimes not new jobs, but jobs that might go over the border, be enticed over the border. Um, the language that I've given you uh, is not something that I'm you know, going to tell you is perfect. Uh, many of the concepts in the Good Jobs uh, First language that I found on the website from, from Mr. Leroy's group, it was a matter of how do you take that concept and put it into Missouri code and make it work. So we took a stab at that you know, with the help of, of the, uh, the, the competent analysts here in the house that help us with those kind of things. But some of this language can probably be improved, and I, I know that we also want to add some language about truth and taxation uh, coming from this uh, study that you have uh, uh, the executive summary of called Paying Taxes to the Boss uh, that was just released a couple of weeks ago. So that there's more than I want to do to this bill, and I want to be in partnership with you about improving the language of it. So um, I would welcome any questions that you have, and because Mr. Leroy has a plane to catch not long from now, uh, we want to get to him as quickly as we can. Thank you very much, uh, Representative. Any questions for the Representative? Okay, seeing none, welcome, gentlemen. 
Thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening, uh, the Chairman Zarin, members of the committee. Thank you very much for your opportunity and invitation to be here. Again, my name is Greg Leroy. I direct a nonprofit, nonpartisan research group called Good Jobs First. I founded it 14 years ago. I've worked on economic development as a trainer, writer, a consultant most of the time since the late 1970s, and I've written two books on the subject, how to improve them. The main thing I want to say to you is that Missouri does some things quite well. It's just very uneven. You, you have a lot of room for improvement by making what you already do well more uh, broadly applied to more of your programs. That's, that's really the takeaway from the three report card studies that we've done, as, as would be um, taken care of by 1571. Um, I also want to add this business about truth and taxation from the study that we released two weeks ago. But to the report card studies, we've issued five of them actually, three in the last 16 months, grading all the states in the District of Columbia on accountability metrics for your major economic development programs. We graded your BUILD program, the Business Use Incentive for Large Scale Development program, the Film Production Tax Credit, the New Jobs Training program, the Quality Jobs program, and Rebuilding Communities program. Compared to other states, Missouri ranked well on all three measures. They came in fifth on transparency, 11th on job creation and job quality, and eighth on monitoring and enforcement. But on absolute scores and report card grades, if you will, the state came in very middling uh, in the high 50s or low 60s and a grade of C or C plus on all the metrics. Specifically on um, transparency, your accountability portal, which, which reports on six different tax, uh, tax credit programs, was one of the first and is remains one of the best and most robust disclosure websites for tax credit uh, programs in the country. However, it has limitations. For instance, it doesn't give you the geographic address of the project and it doesn't give you outcomes. That is, it tells you what the company said it was going to do and where the money came from and who got the money, but it doesn't tell you later what actually came of the deal in terms of actual jobs and actual wages. Um, we also note that for your major program, the Quality Jobs Program, the Department of Economic Development does issue a, a robust uh, annual report detailing, providing more details about that program than are, is disclosed under the accountability portal, uh, but it could still be improved a little bit as well. Um, so HB 51 would codify the best practices that you already have, both in your portal and in the reports, the annual reports, and uh, add, for instance, street addresses and outcome data for your programs, and then combine them into a, uh, what's called a unified development budget, an annual document where you can see all forms of spending in one place that the state makes for economic development. It's kind of a smart planning spending tool. On job creation and job quality standards, um, Two of the programs lack them that we found, uh, but Quality Jobs has exemplary standards. That is, it has market-based wage standards, uh, employer-provided health care, up to 50% of the premium costs. And it's no small matter about um, job quality standards because it enables the state to avoid what we call hidden taxpayer costs. That is, if you allow subsidized companies to pay you know, poverty-level wages, taxpayers really don't know the whole cost of that deal because there's going to be workers qualifying for Medicaid and EITC and SCHIP and affordable housing and so on, food stamps, uh, there are hidden, we call hidden taxpayer costs there. Regarding monitoring and enforcement, most of the big programs in your state are what we call performance based, so companies don't get the credits or the subsidies until they deliver on the deals, and that's a good thing. Um, but there is a little bit of uh, inconsistency in the way some of the outcomes uh, for the monitoring and, and uh, enforcement are reported. For instance, the portal and the quality jobs program don't disclose um, which companies fell short and therefore were penalized or rescinded or had their tax credits rescinded as a result of falling short. It's no big deal that companies fall short. It's normal in a recession especially. Lots of other states are disclosing those outcomes uh, you don't get. Finally, regarding what we call truth and taxation, we issued a study two weeks ago which we named um, 22 programs in 16 states including neighboring states and Missouri's Quality Jobs Program and your Automotive Manufacturing Jobs Act, which we dislike because they derive their value. Uh, they're not what you would call a tax break. I would really properly call them a tax grab. I can't really say it any more bluntly. Instead of reducing a company's income taxes or property or sales taxes, these are subsidies derived from workers' personal income taxes. That's, that's the source of the funding in your state and, and the, 16, the 15 others. Um, 
one of the reasons to be concerned about it is that personal income taxes are one of your most robust sources of revenue, one of the best trackers of your cost of providing services of your state GDP growth. The quality jobs program, the cost of the program went up by more than 600 percent between 2008 and 2011, from 7 to $51 million. It seems to be headed rapidly toward the $8 million cap. The other program is capped at $15 million annually. I doubt you have any other program that has a 600% growth rate in three years. So short of um, getting rid of the programs, we recommend what we call truth in taxation. That is, we don't think it's fair that workers whose taxes aren't really supporting public services aren't made aware of that. So we think their pay stub should clearly state every week or two how much money went where. And with that, I welcome your, your uh, questions. I mean, I think it's a time when all states are making painful budget decisions. The question is, how do you treat your spending for economic development in a way that makes it transparent and fair and effective?